Hi and welcome to Distilling in Australia. My name is Nick and this is uh, video number three, naming my micro distillery. So just a quick note before I get into that, the, uh, the uh, Distilling in Australia website uh, have done some work on it. So that's uh, distillinginaustralia.com. Uh, and what I've done is I've actually started to list the videos in a chronological order. So it's easy for people to keep track of the videos and to run through the videos that I'm doing uh, as they appear in the, right, in the right order. So just to make it a bit easier for you. So https colon forward slash forward slash distillinginaustralia.com and it's all there. Um, so today's episode, video number three, is about naming my uh, distillery or my micro distillery, I should say. And what this really is, is answering question one on the application for a license to manufacture excisable products dash alcohol. So this is answering the first question. This is the information you need to get together uh, to do it. Now remember, this is about my journey, my five year plan, what I hope to achieve over the next five years. But before we get into it, here's five seconds of your life you're never gonna get back, sorry. Okay, well, wasn't that exciting. So, if you are watching this, obviously you got to this stage, please subscribe. It's, it's really important, it helps the channel a lot, uh, it helps with the um, YouTube algorithms, so it's, it's beneficial and also will keep track of, uh, it'll notify you of when I post new videos. So I'm trying to post a new video every week and progress through the whole application uh, process uh, and pursuing my five-year plan, which of course my five-year plan is to be uh, selling 100 bottles of my particular boutique product a week and also by in creating a, uh, an association or community of micro distillers in this country. All right, and again, what we're trying to do here is follow the law, do everything the right way, safely, legally, and responsibly. So that, that's, that's what it's about. Now, uh, that's my journey. So. Also remember, this is a two-way street, so I'm very interested to hear what you have to say. Um, and and I look, I've got to give a, a big thank you to everybody, and the and the feedback I've been getting has been terrific. So thank you very much. And I'm going to give a special shout out to Chris. Chris has been really good. Uh, sent me a few uh, very interesting articles. Uh, so we've been sending a few emails backwards and forwards. So Chris. A big thank you, mate. Really appreciate it. Now remember, this is a two-way street, okay? I'm not pretending to be some distilling guru with all the answers. In actual fact, quite the opposite. This is a journey of watching how I do it and watching what mistakes I make and then you enabling you to go down the same journey and not make the same mistakes. So as I've said before, my journey is to create, or my plan is to create a community of micro distillers. And by doing that, hopefully we can influence the tax office and government if we can get large enough to uh, make the process a bit easier. And a lot of people think it's very daunting, but it's, it's not too bad as long as you break it down into bite-sized pieces and, and address each piece as we go along. Now, at the end of this video, as always, there will be my run sheet. So the run sheet at the end will tell you how much time I've spent to date and how much money I've spent to date. And yes, my wife does see it, unfortunately. And I have a bit of explaining to do this week because I have spent a bit of money, but you get that. Anyway, okay, so naming my distillery. I have decided to call my distillery Hearts Distillery. So that's H-E-A-R-T apostrophe S Distillery. Now, I've done that for a couple of reasons because I'm not aiming to have my particular boutique product on the shelves at Dan Murphy's, okay? So I know that if it was on the shelves at Dan Murphy's, Hearts Distillery is not a sort of a, a name that, you know, the Aussie, the average Aussie would go up and say, oh yeah, I'll grab one of those. You know, no, 
no. But because that's not my target, that's not my marketplace. Uh, I was in Dan's the other day um, and I noticed that uh, there was a distillery down at Byron Bay. Uh, I think it was a gin they were selling and uh, they had, I don't know, probably a hundred bottles of gin just at that one distillery uh, that they were putting out. Now, that would be entirely entire weeks of production for me. Remember, this is about my retirement and me having something to do when I retire. So Haas Distillery came about because of the, f the four basic stages of distillation. And for those who are not aware of it, you, you start off in the distilling process where um, you, you have the four shots and then you have the heads and then you have the hearts and then you have the tails. So the four shots and the heads is sort of the rubbishy type stuff. The hearts is the good stuff. Okay, so that's in my particular uh, product, that's what I'm going to be um, keeping is just the hearts and then you have the tails. All right? and so I won't be keeping the tails either. So the four shots, the heads and the tails I'll be discarding, but I'll only be keeping the hearts and that's, that's going to be the high quality product uh, for what I'm, I'm doing. So hence the name Hearts Distillery because that's all I'm going to be retaining is the hearts in the distillation process. Now, when it comes to naming your um, particular micro distillery, whatever it is that you might be uh, looking at doing, you have to consider what type of entity you want it to be. And, and in Australia, there's, there's basically four types of entities. So you have the, the sole trader, uh, you have a partnership, you have a, a proprietary limited company, and then you have a public company, which is a limited company. So that's basically in terms of cost, the order in which they, they are uh, in terms of expense. So uh, the sole trader is, is the cheapest to set up. Uh, and also probably in terms of uh, risk liability, the most risky. Partnerships, uh, a little less risky because you're sharing the burden with somebody else. But the downside of partnership is you've got to spend money on a partnership agreement and uh, have someone you can trust to go to partnership with and making sure that everyone understands their roles in that partnership. The public company, oh, sorry, not public company, the um, proprietary limited company or the private company, they cost about $1,600 to incorporate. Uh, they give you a bit more um, protection in terms of uh, personal liability. Uh, but you know, with that comes uh, more uh, requirements in at tax time and, and uh, to um, more, more requirements on your um, uh, reporting uh, to the tax office and, and complying with your requirements under ASICS. Uh, and then of course you have the public company. Well, if you're gonna go for a public company, there's no need to watch these videos because you are way outside the scope of, of, of what this is about. So that that is essentially what um, the, uh, the the four options you have. Now, there are other things, of course, like there's discretionary trusts and, all, and there's all sorts of things like that that can come into it as well. Uh, and if you're in doubt or, or you're not experienced with this stuff, by all means, Go and see a solicitor or accountant and, and, and get, them, get it set up by them and get some advice by them. Um, you can buy trusts online. Uh, they're perfectly fine. I know the solicitors out there will be screaming at the TV saying, oh no, but you know, my, my theory is the more the, the more the solicitor objects to what you have to say, more likely uh, how accurate what you're saying is. So. Yeah, uh, I've dealt with solicitors a lot over the years, so you know I know how they how they work, and you know fair enough, they're a great profession, but um, you know sometimes uh, you just got to take a common sense approach to a lot of these things. So when I came up with the name Hearts Distillery, the first thing that you you need to do is you need to do your searches. Okay, so there's no point um, registering or trying to register a business. Uh, if someone else has already got the name, okay? So the first thing you do is you go into Google and you type in search business name and you'll scroll down and you'll see that there's a link there to search business names for ASIC, A-S-I-C. Now, click on that link 
and then you'll go onto the ASICS web page and there's a couple of areas where you can you can search. So the first place I searched in was uh, companies, I think, but it's in front of you now, so I'm just going from memory. Uh, and no res results came up for Haas Distillery. And then the second place I searched was business name or, or vice versa, corporate names. And again, there was no result for the name Haas Distillery, okay? so. As far as those searches, uh, the results of those searches was that there was uh, th those names were free and clear to use. Now, that's all very well. Thinking, okay, great, I can go ahead and register my uh, business name or my company name or whatever it is that you want to register. But by registering that name, you don't own it, and that's something that a lot of people get caught out on is that you actually don't own that name. You've got to see, you've got to register a trademark. So you've got to do a trademark search. So again, just go into Google, type in search trademarks, and then if you scroll down, you'll see that there's a website, IP Australia, uh, and on that website, you can go in where I have here, and you can search for a trademark, and I put in Haas Distillery, and I've searched all categories, and this is for Australia, this is a, uh, a search for Australian uh, trademarks, and you'll see that there's been no result. So I know now that there's no trademark for Haas Distillery, there's no business name, and there's no company name. So I'm free to, to go ahead and register those the, that name. So the process is quite straightforward. Now I was, I happened to have an old family discretionary trust lying around that I hadn't used, uh, which I'd uh, done many years ago. And uh, I decided to dust that off and, uh, and use a family trust. Now I did that because I'm taking this into my retirement and you know whatever income I earn from it, uh, yeah, I might not necessarily need. So it's just a way of me being able to distribute uh, any income I can with my family members. So uh, yeah, it, it was just a mechanism to do that in an efficient and um, and legal way. And so it, by going down the road of a family trust or discretionary family trust right at the beginning. Uh, I don't have to worry about uh, entering into any tax avoidance scheme, schemes down the track uh, by changing, uh, changing the way the business is structured. So when you, in my particular case, again, this is my case, I took my, uh, my family trust and I uh, got onto the Australian Tax Office website and applied for a tax file number. So that's the first thing you need to do. So uh, a tax file number was issued for my particular discretionary family trust. So once you applied for your tax file number, then what you do is you go on to the, uh, the uh, ASICS website and um, you then start your application process for your business name, but then it will direct you to an ABN. So then you got to, it'll take you over to another, another section where you can register your uh, entity, whatever it is, entity that you want to do, to get an ABN number. And that's important because every business must have an ABN number in Australia anyway. So when you go through that process, yeah, it will then issue you with an ABN number. So you'll then have your tax file number and your ABN number uh, for your entity that you are going to be using however you want to do it. Um, of course, if you're going to incorporate a, a company, a proprietary with a company, the process is a little bit different. So uh, you'd actually incorporate the company and then when you did that, you get your uh, ABN um, number at that particular point in time. So. Then uh, once I have my ABN for my, uh, for my discretionary trust, uh, then applied for the business name. So the business name was done on the ASICS website. Uh, you just follow the information, you say apply for a business name, and then you just fill in, fill in the information they ask you. You know, your name, your address, uh, you know, your tax file number. So all the usual information that they want to know about you uh, to, is to issue you with your um, business name. So then when you finish that process, you pay your fees, uh, then you get your um, your business name registration. That's the first place that you really 
paying any sort of money, which is, I did a registration of business name. Business name is owned by my discretionary family trust. My particular setup, because it suits me. You do whatever it is that you want to do. Now, once I've had those three things in place, the next thing was to apply for the trademark. So again, you've got to go into uh, IP Australia, uh, .gov, uh, whatever it is, um, and just go through the process. Now, do a head start. I did a head start. So you just click on a head start trademark. Um, your logo, don't worry too much. Well, my theory is you don't need to worry too much about your logo. What you're trying to do is just have some type of logo there and your name of your business. So in, other, in, in my case, my business was called Hearts Distillery uh, and applied for the trademark for the logo, which is of course a heart and the words Hearts Distillery. Uh, and that's there to protect me and to protect my name that I own that. Okay, so no one else can come, if someone else comes along and wants to um, register Hearts Distillery South Australia for argument's sake, I could object to that and they wouldn't be allowed to do it because they'd be infringing on my trademark. And sorry if you can hear my dog barking, he's, 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 a, he's a Jack Russell Shih Tzu cross and he's like Rambo, he goes off at everything. But anyway, that's another story. So I've now got my discretionary trust, I've got my tax file number, I've got my ABN, I've got my business name registered uh, and I've got my trademark registered. So the last thing on the list was to reserve my URL. So you can't get a URL with the .com.au uh, ending to it unless you have a right to that name. So uh, that's where the business name comes in. You've got to be able to provide the um, your URL provider uh, with uh, your uh, business name uh, number, business ABN, to prove that in actual fact you do own or you have a, a right to use that name. So I've reserved the name hearstdistillery.com.au and you can look it up and you'll find that there's nothing there except the little logo with Hearts Distillery on it at the moment because I haven't had a chance to do any more work. I mean, this has all been going on in the last 10 days. So there's been a fair bit going on. So now my entity is all set up and I'm ready to go. So I have all the information I need and now I can then transpose that information into question one on the um, application for an excise, uh, on an excise uh, license. So that's really all I wanted to go through today is just setting up the entity and naming the entity of what I'm going to be calling it. Um, my next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the actual application form from beginning to end, uh, but not answering every question. I'm just going to go through to show you the questions and to explain what I believe the tax office is looking for. Um, I'm going to be in touch with the tax office uh, next week and have a discussion with them about, uh, about the application uh, and just to make sure that the direction I'm heading in is the same direction as uh, or is going to provide the ATO with the information they would need. And remember the ATO has enormous discretion over the licensing process and the, your application for an excise license is just one part of it. You also have to have uh, a, um, uh, a um, storage uh, uh, permit or application. You've got to also get permission to purchase a, a, dist a still. So yeah, there, there, there are lots of bits that we have to go through. But again, we're just going to break it up into small sections and just attack each section at a time uh, for my Patreon supporters, this information will be available to you, uh, to the budding distillers. Uh, so if you want to get onto Patreon, uh, patreon.com forward slash distilling uh, and subscribe as a budding, uh, budding distiller. Uh, as I get this information out there, that information will be available to you. All right. So um, thank you for watching. Um, Hopefully this one is a bit shorter and not as painful as the last one with 24 minutes, whatever, it was a bit too long. Uh, remember, please subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. It helps the channel. 
Thank you so much to all my subscribers and Patreon people. Unbelievable what response I get. Uh, just goes to show that there is a need for someone to actually sit down and go through this process and make the mistakes so you can see um, what's going on. So ciao for now. Uh, straight after this will be the running sheet uh, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for your time. Distilling alcohol is illegal in Australia unless you hold the appropriate licenses and permits. I am not a lawyer and the contents of this video are not intended to be legal advice. Do not rely on any information contained in this video and seek your own professional legal advice before making any decisions. Be aware, the Australian Tax Office and local law enforcement agencies will be taking interest in this channel due to its content. Please keep this in mind before posting any comments. Any comments posted are the opinion of the person posting and not of this channel. Let's get started.